recently been asked to comment on a coroner's report for an unfortunate fatality on Ben Nevis in the winter and uh, what's this done is really highlighted um, some basic good practice that wasn't necessarily uh, heeded by the unfortunate victim of the accident and um, I'd just like to chat through what those uh, good basic principles are and the first one is um, treating yourself to some training you know we wouldn't dream of getting in a car without getting some training first on how to drive it and it's very much the same if you're going out into the Scottish hills in the summer or winter and um, why not treat yourself to a course there's lots of providers out there who uh, offer courses in uh, mountain skills and mountain training and basic hillcraft and uh, the fundamental basics of uh, for example navigation with map and compass is uh, a skill that you really shouldn't be heading out into the hills without learning how to use those first so that training aspect is really important and uh, signing up for a training course isn't necessarily a um, a hardship or something that you should be frightened of it will actually turn out to be a really enjoyable fulfilling experience and help you with your uh, your hill walking and your mountaineering for for many years to come another thing that didn't happen on that uh, instant which uh, had a huge uh, outcome at the end was the fact that the person didn't leave a note with anyone as to where they were going or when they would be back so they set off for a day on Ben Nevis and uh, didn't come back and uh, no one knew they were out there. The, the family wasn't aware that they were on the mountain that day and uh, therefore didn't report the person missing. And unfortunately, the person was found by chance three days later, still alive, but uh, again, unfortunately, he didn't survive. So if the person had left a root card and uh, someone had known that they were overdue, then the uh, outcome could have been uh, very different. So training combined with leaving a, it could be an official root card or it could just be a note with the accommodation provider you're staying with or leaving a, a message with your family or friends to say where you're going and uh, when you should be back could uh, save your life. Another really salient point which um, came out of the, uh, the incident was uh, the use of mobile phones. The, the guy had a mobile phone and uh, made a great deal of uh, effort to get a message out to the outside world as he needed help and uh, he left a huge amount of text on the phone but he was in a position where he had no mobile phone reception and uh, I think a lot of us carry mobile phones on the hill and it's a, it's a really useful safety backup but just to be aware that you don't always have reception on the hill and often if you're not line of sight down to a glen then there won't be reception and uh, the battery power of the phone is also um, a factor you need to take into consideration particularly when the weather gets cold because the battery will run down a lot sooner. Final message that sort of came across from uh, this particular incident was um, use of other mechanical devices like GPS and um, what we're finding with the Cairngorm rescue team is that uh, a lot of folk are carrying GPS but other than switch them on and get a grid reference they don't actually know how to use them so we've been involved with many rescues now where folk have actually dialed 999 been able to give a 10 figure grid reference as to the location but they aren't able to use the GPS to navigate themselves safely off the hill and again it boils down to training you know it's no good having kind of a super Gucci boys toy if you don't actually know how to use it and you need to just spend some time either attending a course or you know training yourself as to how to use a bit of kit and uh, use it safely to help yourself off the hill and the battery power for those is again an issue and GPS really use up batteries very quickly so your normal sort of long life Duracells often aren't good enough if you're keeping it in your rucksack as a, a safety backup then I'd recommend buying lithium batteries which will give you about eight times the, the shelf life. A really useful um, skill to have and to, to carry out to minimise the, the risk of you being involved in some uh, incident in the mountains is to very much focus on good preparation and that might be as simple as looking at a mountain weather forecast which you might get from the television or the radio or the mountain weather information service um, but putting some planning into your route from what the information you get from the forecast and uh, if the weather's going to be bad it might not actually mean that you don't go out on the hill it might just influence your choice of route you may do the route the other way around because it's strong winds and it'll then be on your back or you may in fact stay away from some sharp edges because it's a, a super windy day and go on some lower hills 
So looking at the forecast and doing some planning prior to going out, do some reading. There's plenty of uh, websites now where you can do some uh, research on the net about appropriate uh, routes or ideas for routes and uh, plenty of guidebooks and of course referring to the Ordnance Survey maps so you've got a good handle on where you're going and what you can expect and potential sort of routes to shorten the day if, uh, if things aren't going as you plan. Of course, with all these uh, top tips, handy hints and guidelines, it's very, imp it's very important you don't get hung up on them and you do get out there and enjoy the fantastic Scottish mountains.